Come on in. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Hi, guys. Come on in. Hi. Dee Dee, how are you, dear? <laughs> how are you, Dee Dee? Come on in. Hi. Hi, Tawana. Hi, Trina. Hello there. Hi, Danielle. Kelly Smith. I can always count on you. Hi, Lydia. Tawana Nichelle, how are you? Penny Line, love you so much. Thank you all. Make sure that you uh, put this prayer meeting on your page, okay? We're going to do Bible study more tonight. We may pray at the end, but I do just have a word that I'd like to share with you all first tonight, or most importantly, okay? So come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Hi, Linda. How are you? Hi. Come on in, ladies. Come on in. I hope you had a great day today. You're doing great. Awesome. I'm doing great, too, Tawana. Thank you so much for asking. Janine Moore, hello, my love. Hello there. Hi, Marie Brown. How are you? Come on in. Please tag and share. Please tag and share if you would um, place this, um, if you post this, uh, share this rather this um, prayer meeting to your page. I really really appreciate that So just share it to your page and then all of your friends and followers can uh, join us in prayer as well But I want you to tag some people personally. Maybe you can text somebody If you know uh, if you have some friends that might want to join us. Hello, Cynthia greetings to you Maybe you can actually text someone And tell them to hop on because I have a word from the Lord that I want to share with you tonight and then uh, we may close in prayer. We'll just see how the Lord leads. But more importantly, tonight I really want to share this word with you from the Lord. Um, because I just really want you to make sure that uh, you're always free. How are we free? How are we liberated? Through the truth. The truth makes us free. What is the truth? The truth is the word of God. So tonight we're going to study uh, so you can know the truth of the word of God and so that you can always be free. All right. So go ahead and te uh, text somebody. Um, DM somebody, message somebody. I think you can message people. You can message somebody this video uh, actually in your messenger. So go through your messengers. Message it to somebody so they can come on and join us. Hello there, Gracie. Good to see you, Gracie. Good to see you. Thank you for being here, Tasha Daniels. Good to see you as well. I'll give you all just a few more minutes uh, so we can uh, get more on today. Thank you, Penny Line, for um, tagging uh Oh, is it Asia? Asia Santiago. Thank you for tagging her. Thank you for tagging uh, Sonora Tawana. I appreciate that. Good to see you too, Gracie. Sarah. Hello, Sarah Young. I'm always happy to see you. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being here tonight. So you all tag and share. Ta Gwendolyn. Hi, Gwendolyn. How are you? Good to see you, Gwendolyn. So very good to see you. So very good to see you. Thank you, Janine. You'll message somebody. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. I appreciate that. I, I pre KL. Hello, KL. Love to you. Love to you. I appreciate you all uh, sharing the message and um, sharing this experience that we have together every week. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get into the word. Uh, the title of the message uh, that I'm going to teach you tonight is um, it's a very provocative statement that I'm going to make because you usually you are usually uh, used to hearing it an, another way. But the title of the message tonight is "Sin Should Bring Me Closer to God." I want you to type that in the comments. Say "Sin Should Bring Me Closer to God." Type that in the comments, please. That's the title today. Sin should bring me closer to God. Sin should bring me closer to God. I say it's a provocative statement because usually you are used to hearing that sin separates us from God. And I know that's true. But tonight I want to speak to you from this perspective. Sin should bring me closer to God. Come on, type that in the comments. That's our title. We're just going to go ahead and move forward. Thank you, Tawana. Thank you, Kelly. Sin. Thank you, Janine. Sin should bring me closer to God. When we sin, we should draw closer to God. I didn't say if. I said when. When we sin, we should draw closer to God. Romans chapter 3. I want you all to read Romans chapter 3 this week in your prayer time. The third chapter of Romans, when you read that, you'll find these words there. For all have sinned 
and fall short of the glory of God. The Amplified Version says, all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God. Most people quote this verse in the past tense using using uh, the word fall as fallen. All have sinned and have fallen. That's really, I, I, I would say it as well. And so I, I found out, I think, in one version that says that. But more importantly, and most mostly, when you see it in the scriptures, it's saying fall short, which gives people, when we say falling short, it gives people an inclination that the sin is past tense. Like once you become saved, you won't fall anymore. But the scripture actually says uh, the fall is present. All have sinned and fall short. As I said, the Amplified Version says, continually fall short of the glory of God. All right? Fall short. This fall happens. I'm sorry. When this fall happens, um, what I want you to do and remember to do is not cut off your connection with God. All have sinned. All will fall short. We fall short of his glory. But what the, the most important thing that I want to teach you tonight is when you do fall short of the glory of God, do not cut off your connection with God. Lord, help me teach tonight. <laughs> help me teach, Lord. Help me teach with clarity. When you fall short, do not cut off your connection with God. God does not cut us off ever. God never cuts, cuts us off. Whenever we feel distant from God, we cut ties. God didn't do that. Whenever we feel distant from God, we have moved. God has not moved. We move. Okay? We move. So don't stop going to church when you fall short. Don't stay home from church when you fall short. I don't care if you sin on Saturday night. If you sin on Saturday night, I want you to get up and go to church on Sunday. I hope you hear me tonight. If you sin on Saturday night, get up and go to church on Sunday. You have a better chance of turning your life around. You have a better chance of rectifying your mistake in church than you do outside of church. This is why when you fall short, the enemy will tell you to get away and isolate yourself. No, go to church. <laughs> Don't isolate yourself when you fall short. When you fall short, when you sin, please, please do not stop praying. Do not stop reading your word. Do not walk away from God. Don't do it. Don't do it. The enemy loves for us to become isolated. He loves for you to feel embarrassed. He loves for you to feel ashamed and to get away from church, to get away from the people of God. If you find yourself that you've fallen in sin, the opposite is what you should do. Go towards the church. Go towards prayer. Go towards your Bible study. Keep going towards it. God is, God is not leaving you. What did the Bible tell us? Jesus said, I came to the world. I didn't come to the world to, to, to condemn the world. He said, I didn't come for that. I didn't come to condemn the world. I came so that the world through me might be saved. God does not condemn you when you sin. Does the Holy Spirit convict us? Absolutely. But God does not condemn us. One of the mi biggest misconceptions, my dear sisters, is that uh, the church is full of perfect people. I don't know why people think that. <laughs> that is one of the biggest uh, misconceptions or uh, um, of, of the church. The church is full of people who struggle and have issues just like everybody else. The difference in the people that are in church is that they repent and they keep going. Okay, I, I'm gonna just, I'm I'm gonna sip my tea on that. I'm gonna let that sit with you for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna let that just rest. I'm gonna let that sit with you for a minute. That's the difference. We all fall short. I fall short. I fall short, my dear sisters. <laughs> we all fall short. Everybody, this is why so many people, it's so hard to get people, um, the, some people in the world to come to church or to want to be a part of our family because they feel like, well, I'm not perfect. I'm not either. That's why we go to church. 
That's why we pray. That's why we study. Nobody is perfect. Nobody. The difference is the people that go to church, we know how to repent. We keep going. If you are struggling, the church is the place for you. The church is a place for you. Your personal times of prayer and Bible study, if you are struggling, that is the time to do it. You don't just want to get in God's presence and, and study his word when you feel like you're all good. You want to do it when you feel like you're bad. <laughs> that You especially want to do it then. That's when we need to draw closer to the Lord. That's why I told you the, 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 um, the title of this message tonight is sin should bring me closer to God. It should bring, bring me closer to God, closer to him. That's what it should do. Go run to your prayer closet. If you feel like you are in sin, run to your prayer closet. That's when God wants to talk to you. That's when he wants to talk to you. I just get so vexed with people who feel like, you know, everybody in church is perfect. No, we're not. <laughs> Nobody is perfect. There is, Jesus said, there is none righteous but the father. That's it. That's all. We all are trying to get this thing right. We all are trying. When I was studying this word uh, um, for you this week, the Lord told me, he took me back to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, when Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me three times. G Peter's like, oh, no, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, my Lord. I would never do that. Jesus is like, yeah, you're going to do it. You're going to deny me three times. Oh, Lord, not me. Oh, no, Lord. I would never deny. He's like, yeah, you're going to do it. You're going to deny me three times. So sure enough, when they came and took Jesus into the court, when, when they came and arrested Jesus, was well, uh, you know, when he, well, he was back there in the court with Barabbas and they would, you, well, you know the whole story of that. So when Jesus was in court, the, the Bible says that Peter was outside of the court, like in the courtyard. And this girl came up to him and said, I think you wanted them. You wanted the disciples. Peter's like, no, I'm not. Just like that. He just told Jesus, oh, father, I would never. Oh, oh, Jesus, I would never deny you. How many of us have ever told the Lord? Oh, my Lord, I would never do that. And we found ourselves doing these things. Peter said, oh, no, Lord, I would never deny you. I would never, I would never deny you. The girl said, I think you want to. He was like, I'm not. Someone said it a second time. He said, I'm not. I am not one of Jesus's disciples. A third time. Jesus told him he was going to do it three times, right? A third time, here comes the third accusation. I know you are part of the disciples. I know you're a follower of Jesus. Peter wanted to wipe Jesus's DNA off of him. He wanted to wipe the DNA of Jesus off of him so much, he started cursing. They said, you're a follower of Jesus. Beep, beep, beep. I'm not, I'm not. Beep, beep, beep. I'm not. <laughs> he literally started cursing. And the Bible says immediately after he denied Jesus the third time, the cock crowed, crowed. And when, when Peter heard that cock crow after he had denied Jesus that third, the third time, the Bible says that Peter wept bitterly. He just began to weep bitterly because his mind went back to when Jesus told him, you're going to deny me. And he was like, no, Lord, no, Lord, no, no, I would never, I would never. Can I share something with you? We're talking tonight. I couldn't wait to talk to y'all tonight. Can I share something with you? Sometimes you, you would think to yourself, oh, no, I would never. You don't know. This is why we pray and we ask God to keep us. You don't know. <laughs> You don't know. You don't know. I was, I was going along in life one time. I, I love for God to teach me lessons because I, I can teach other people. And I was thinking, Ooh, I've been good. You know, I, I haven't had any temptation at all. I'm doing great. And I was like, Ooh, I, I'm doing fine. You know, I'm doing fine in this walk of holiness. I'm doing just fine. I'm doing good. And then I had a temptation. Then I had a temptation. And you know what the Holy Ghost said to me? He said, it's not that you're walking so circumspectly and so holy. I'm holding back the temptation. God help me tonight. He said, I'm holding back the temptation. It's not that you're so righteous. I'm literally holding back the temptation. God help me, Jesus. This is why I want to tell you all. Sin is in for everybody is subject to it. <laughs> this is why we have to stay in the prayer. Peter just thought he would never do that. How many things you thought you would never do that you did? Come on. Let, can we be honest tonight? Can we be honest? 
You know what? I like to preach and teach and, and, and pray with my Wonder Women and with my Pop-Up Nation. We real. You cannot help people if you're not real. I want to help women to be all that they can be. The oh God, I feel your presence. The only way I can do that, I got to be real with you. The reason that we're walking circumspectly and holy before the Lord, the God is holding back the tempter. God, help me tonight. Come on, let's put that in the comments. Say, Lord, hold back the tempter. Come on, hold back the temptation. Come on, everybody. I don't want to move till you type that. Say, Father, hold back the temptation. Come on, put it in there. Say, Lord, hold back the temptation because we want to walk circumspectly before you. What does what did Jesus tell us in, 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 in the Lord's prayer? He said, lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into it, but deliver us from evil. Come on, put it in there, sisters. Come on, let us never, let us never be pompous. Let us never be prideful. We are only what we are by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Put it in there. Say, yes, Penny Line. Father, hold back the temptation. Hold it back. Kamisha, hold back. Tell God. Come on, let's humble ourselves tonight. Lord, hold back the temptation. So the Bible says that Peter immediately, after the cock crowed, um, after he denied Jesus three times and the cock crowed, the Bible says Peter wept sorely. He wept bitterly. And when I read that, the Holy Spirit said to me, that was immediate repentance. That was immediate repentance. Peter immediately re repented and then he kept going. I want you to type this in the comments, my dear sisters. Say, I will practice immediate repentance. Come on, put that there. Come on, put that in the comments. Say, I will practice immediate repentance. Come on, say it. Say, I will practice immediate repentance. I will repent quickly. Come on. Come on, put it in the comments. Say, I will repent quickly. I will practice immediate repentance. Come on. Yes. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Tawana. I will practice immediate repentance. The Bible says Peter wept sorely. That was immediate repentance. Real repentance will cause tears. Real repentance, you have to have a contrite heart. What did David say? David said, give me a contrite heart, meaning let me really be sorry. Let me really be sorry for it. He was immediately repentant. He, uh, he, he repented immediately. And then we go on to Acts chapter 2 and on the day of Pentecost, do you know that Peter preached to 3,000 people when they got saved? You know why Peter did that? Because he repented immediately and he kept going. This is what I'm saying to us. If you sense, sense no, I, I'm sorry, Lord. No, it's not if, it's when. When we sin, repent immediately and keep going on with God, my dear sisters. Keep pressing forward with God. Peter repented on the day of Pentecost. God used him to preach to 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says Peter preached 3,000. Listen, 3,000 people were added to the church because he repented and he kept going. Guess what Peter uh, preached, you guys? He preached repentance. You know why he could preach repentance? You know why 3,000 people came to be saved? Because he lived it. God, help me today. You can't preach things you haven't lived. You can't teach things you haven't lived. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If Peter would have run away from Jesus when he denied Jesus, if he would have just ran away and said, oh, I, I sinned, that's it for me. Hallelujah. If he would have done that, he wouldn't have preached to those 3,000. So I'm saying to you today, I don't know who I'm here for. I don't know. But I'm saying to you today, my dear sisters, I don't care what you've done. Go back to God. Get back in your place. Go back to church. I don't care what you've done. Get back in your place. Your destiny depends on your connection with God. The success of your business depends on your connection with God. 
Your promotion depends on your connection with God. Your brand, that brand that you're trying to advertise, that you're trying to establish, it depends on your connection with God. Your successful future depends on your connection with God. Your marriage, your children, everything about you depends on your connection to God. So as a, again, let me say that when we sin, keep your connection. Woo! Hallelujah. God help me today. When we sin, keep your connection. Hallelujah. I want you to tag some of your sisters that are on here. Tag them, say, sis, keep your connection. I don't care. Come on, put it in there. Let's minister to each other today. Tag somebody. Keep your connection. Tawana, keep your connection. Penny Line, keep your connection. Delois, keep your connection. Dee Dee, keep your connection. Marie, keep your connection. Hallelujah. Keep your connection. Keep your connection. The devil wants you to think that you're not worthy to be in the presence of the Lord. The devil wants you to think uh, that you are not worthy to be a part of the family of God. The devil wants you to think that you don't, you can belong in the church with the perfect people. Nobody's perfect. Get back in there with all those imperfect people and worship your God. Hallelujah. Keep going. Glory to God. Keep going, my dear sisters. When the devil tells you you're not worthy, you know what? You say, yep, you, you're right, you're right, but I, but I know I am worthy. See, this is why we study. I tell you all, all the time, we don't read the Bible, we study. There's a difference in reading the Bible. There's a difference in studying the Bible. We study the Bible. So let's look at Isaiah 64, okay? Let's look at Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64 says, listen to this carefully. We all are infected and impure with sin. Let me say that again. I'm in Isaiah 64. We all are infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, our righteous actions, they are nothing but filthy rags to God. Let me read that again. The Bible says, this is Isaiah 64. We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, when we say how great we are, when we say, look at what I've done, look at how I'm walking with God. When we display our righteous deeds and actions to God, there is nothing but filthy rags. Your best is filthy to God. Your best is filthy to God. I want you to think about the most righteous person in your life. Whoever you feel is righteous, your pastor, uh, the bishop of your, your um, denomination, whoever you esteem high, whoever you feel is righteous. I want you to think about this. To God, their best is filthy. The only way that we are accepted to God, the only way we are accepted is through the blood of Jesus. That's it. That's all. And through the grace of God, we can never be good enough. I don't care how good you are. It's still filthy to Jesus. It's still filthy to God. It's still filthy to him because he's too perfect. He's too holy. He's too righteous. This is why Jesus had to come and be our perfect sacrifice. I want to explain to you tonight what filthy rags are. Okay. In this scripture in Isaiah 64, I'm going to explain to you what filthy rags are. Okay. Filthy rags means an extreme form of ceremonial uncleanness. Filthy rags is also referring to our righteousness as that of an unclean leper. When there were lepers in the Bible, in public, if you were coming towards a leper, you couldn't get within a, a certain uh, feet footage of towards a leper. You can only come a few feet. When a leper saw you coming, they'd have to, they had to, um, scream out, unclean, unclean, unclean. Don't come. I'm unclean. I'm unclean. That's what lepers did. And Isaiah is saying that our filthy rags are akin or related to that of unclean lepers. Filthy rags in this verse, my dear sisters, listen to me real closely. Lean in. Let me talk to you. Filthy rags means a menstruous rag. That's what filthy rags are. When the prophet Isaiah wrote this book, women used rags during their menstrual cycles. There was no always poise. There was no always. There was no poise. There was none of that. They used rags. And the prophet Isaiah is saying here that our holy God is so righteous. 
our little righteousness, we try to be righteous and, and compare to him. Our righteousness is like that of a menstruous rag. It's that filthy to God. The only connection we have with God is through the blood of Jesus. If you notice, whenever I pray, I always, God help me, I feel the anointing. I always stop by the cross. I always thank Jesus for his blood. I always thank him for his sacrifice because that's the only way I can talk to God. I can't do anything great enough. Any, my best is, is filthy. But the whoosh, haya, mm, Jesus, I love you. But the blood of Jesus makes me pure. The blood of Jesus allows me access. The blood of Jesus. God can't look at me. I'm too filthy. Hallelujah. My best is filthy to him. Oh, but he can look at Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's how we connect with him. That's the only way we, way we connect with him. That's why you should always, always worship Jesus for the sacrifice. Because that is the only way we are connected to God. Everything you have came through the blood of Jesus. Every blessing you have came through the blood of Jesus. Every piece of success you have, it came through the blood of Jesus. Only thing we deserve is death. Glory to God. This is why the blood songs, I can't take blood songs much. Anybody that knows me personally, they know it. I can't take, I can't take blood songs. I can't take songs about the cross. You want to see me run around the church? Talk about the blood. Ha! 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 Woo! Hallelujah! Glory to God. I can't take it. Kondobosaya. Because I know the importance. I know that I'm not worthy. That's why I'm so grateful for the blood of Jesus. That's the only way we enter because our best is filthy. But when Jesus attaches his blood, glory to God, to us, we are accepted. Hebrews 13, 12 says, Jesus suffered outside the city gate and made the people holy by his own blood. The only way we are holy, the only way we are made righteous, my dear sisters, is because of the blood of Jesus. I want you to type this in the comments. I am made holy through the blood of Jesus, period. Come on, put that in there. Say, I am made holy through the blood of Jesus, period. That is the only way I'm holy. That is the only way I'm righteous. My righteousness is filthy. The only way I'm righteous is through the blood of Jesus. Come on, put it in there. Say, I am made holy by the blood of Jesus. That's it. That's all. I am made holy by the blood of Jesus. Come on, let's say it. I'm going to give you a moment. That's the only thing that makes you righteous. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing that makes you righteous. That's the only thing that makes you holy. It's the blood. Thank you, Penny Line. Yes. Thank you, Tawana. Thank you, Cynthia. I am made holy by the blood of Jesus, period. That's it. And that's all. Another reason why we are connected to God, the reason why we can stay connected is because of grace. The blood of Jesus and the grace of God. Ephesians chapter two, Ephesians chapter two, for by grace are you saved through faith. That is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. By grace are you saved. Grace saves me. How did I get this grace? I got this grace. I accepted it through faith because I believed it. Hallelujah. Woo, I love the Lord. I hope this word is blessing y'all tonight. I couldn't wait to talk to you. I'm on fire. <laughs> I am saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God. I received this gift. It is not of your actions. It is not of your deeds. It is not of your accomplishments. It is by grace, which is God's gift to you. Now, listen to me, sisters. If you truly believed that it is not by your own deeds or your own actions, when we sin, we wouldn't turn away from God. I'm going to say that again. When we, if, if we truly believed, if we truly believed, that we are saved and we are connected to God by grace and by the blood of Jesus. Uh, if we sin, we wouldn't turn away from God because my actions don't connect me anyway. Who help me tonight? My actions don't connect me. So if, if my actions, if I, if, if I'm doing, if I am in sin, that is not separating me from God. Glory to God, because I'm not connected to him by what I do. So that means I'm not separated from him by what I do. If I'm not connected to God by what I do, 
I am not separated from God by what I do. I'm going to say it again. If I am not connected to God by what I do, I am not separated from God by what I do. I am connected to God by grace, through faith, and by his blood. That's how I'm connected. When we sin, we stop going to church. When we sin, we stop praying. When we sin, we stop studying the word. When we sin, we avoid the saints. We hope we don't run into our pastor. When we sin, we're just MIA. We, we just get lost when we sin. So that is proof that when we sin, we feel like that our position in the family of God is dependent upon what we do. Okay, I'm not going to move forward. I got to know you understood that. Put in, in the comments, I want you to put, I understand. Come on, say it. Come on, say, I understand. I can't move till I know you get it. Come on, say, I understand. Come on, say it. If I'm not connected to God by what I do, and it is a gift, that means I'm not separated from God by what I do. Come on. I need to know you get it. Come on. Come on. You understand? Thank you, Tawana. Janine, you got it? Okay, thank you. Tasha, you got it. Okay, you understand that. Thank you. Vanessa, Sheila, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your connection to God is not predicated on your deeds. It is the gift of God and his grace. The devil wants people to feel like they're not worthy to be with God. If you do something wrong, the truth of the matter is none of us are worthy. When he tells you you're not worthy, I know I want your rebuttal, your rebuttal and your uh, uh, reply to be nobody is. You're right. Nobody is. Nobody is worthy to be with God. Nobody is worthy to be connected to God. The only one worthy is Jesus. What does the Bible say in the revelations? We worship him alone. Who is what? Worthy. Woo! I feel the anointing tonight. Only Jesus is worthy. This is why we accept his blood so we can be worthy. Only Jesus is worthy. None of us are worthy to be with God. Let me tell you, my dear sisters. Let me tell you, my dear sisters. It is difficult for us to comprehend the unconditional love of God and the grace of God because we don't love like that and we don't extend grace like that. Let me say that again. The reason why it is difficult for us to understand and comprehend that Jesus loves us this much. The reason is it's hard is because we don't we don't love like that. We don't love like that. We don't love like that. We don't extend grace like that. We don't do it. That's why it's hard for us to believe that God would do it for us because we don't do it. We don't do that. If you're in a relationship with someone and all of a sudden they shift on you. Come on, let's talk. Let's talk. If we're in a relationship, if you if we're in a relationship with someone, all of a sudden they shift on you. They don't respond to any of your texts or your emails, any of your any of your attempts to communicate with them. They diss you. They ignore you. They don't return any of your calls. They never have time for you. They don't react to any of the love that you show them. Eventually, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. Because I'm telling you what I would do. Because I have, uh, because th this is what, this is not the love of God. As human beings, this is what's going to start happening. You know what? You're going to start feeling like a fool. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to stop showing those acts of love. F okay. Will you please let me, sisters, talk to me in these comments. Am I telling the truth? After a while, you'll feel like a fool. It's like, why am I showing love to these people and they don't even respond to me? Come on. Yes, Gwendolyn. If they ghost you after a while, what are you going to do? You're going to stop. You're going to stop. Even in a romantic relationship, we will encourage our sisters. If he's not responding to your love, come on now. If he's not responding to your love, we will tell our sisters, stop, sis, leave him alone. Just, just, just leave him alone. Don't, you will stop showing loving gestures towards people. If they stop loving you, you stop loving them. Cause that is how we are. You will feel foolish. You will all of a sudden you'll say, uh, uh, I'm better than that. Come, sisters, thank you, Tawana. Thank you. You'll be like, I'm better than that. Well, I don't have to, I don't have to show love to these people. They're not showing love to me. You will stop. This is why it is difficult for us to believe that God still feels the same about us when we ignore him, that he still feels the same about us when we disrespect him, that he still feels the same about us when we don't return his calls, we don't return his texts, when we cheat on him.
God, help me tonight. When we cheat on him, he says, I'm married to the backslider. He'll never divorce you. God, help me tonight. This is hard for us to feel, to, to comprehend that. When we don't return his love, it is hard for us to wrap our brains around the fact that God will still love us. It is hard for us to wrap our brains around the fact that when we sin, he still loves us. It's hard for us to do that. It's hard for us to do that because when someone sins against us, we did, we let them go. But God is not like that. Oh my God, he loves us so much. Come on, type this in the comments. Say, oh, how he loves me. Come on, put it in there. Say, oh, how he loves me. Come on. Put it in there, sister. Say, oh, how he loves me. Come on. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, oh, how he loves me. Come on, put it in the comments. Say, oh, how he loves me. Let's just take a moment to worship him for that. Oh, how he loves me. He loves us so much. He lo Thank you. He loves us so. Oh, yes, Gwendolyn. When, none when nothing else could help, his love lifted me. The Bible says while we were sinners, he didn't wait for us to get it right. He didn't wait for us to love him back. He didn't wait for that. While we were sinners, he died for us. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Now, this message of grace, my dear sisters, it must be handled with kit gloves. For those of you that are on here tonight, if you preach and teach, you must handle the, the message of grace with kit gloves. You got to teach this very carefully. Because if we're not careful, we will lead people to believe that they don't have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. And they can just depend on grace because, you know, God's going to love me anyway. You know, God, I have grace. God's going to love me anyway. No, 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 no. Let's go back to the Bible. Tonight we're doing Bible study. Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back. Let's go back. Romans 6. Romans 6 tells us where sin increased, God's remarkable, gracious gift of grace, his unmerited favor have surpassed it and increased even more. Many of you are used to this in the King James Version when this verse says, where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. But shall we go on sinning? Paul is saying this. He says, shall we go on sinning that grace should increase? Shall I keep sinning so grace should increase? Paul said, of course not. By no means, certainly not. No, God forbid that we continue to sin so that grace can increase. We should not continue to sin. Just because we know we have this unmitigated grace, just because we know we have the love of God, just because we know that God still loves us when we sin, that does not mean that we should continue to willfully sin. We should not abuse this grace and take this grace for granted. See, this, 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 is, this is the caveat of teaching grace. Yes, we have grace. But should we continue to sin so we can have more grace? No, no, no. No, no, we should not. We should not. This scripture this is the last scripture I want to leave, this with, leave you with tonight. Is this the last one? No, I got one more. But this is one scripture that I want to leave you with tonight. This is in Romans 2. Romans 2. It says, it is the goodness and kindness of God that is intended to lead us to repentance and turn us away from sin. Let me say that again. This is Romans 2. Romans 2. It says, it is the goodness and kindness of God that is intended, intended to lead us to repentance and for us to turn away from sin. What is the scripture saying? God is so good to you. God loves us so much. He is hoping that his love for you will keep you from sin. God is so good to us. He is hoping that his love for us will keep us from sin. God, help me today. That's what it is saying. This is a scripture that I, I, I use for myself. I started using this scripture in Romans 2 when I was a teenager. Because when you're a teenager, that's when you have a lot of peer pressure. When you're a teenager, that's when you, when you want to be a part of the crowd. That's when you want to go with the flow. You have a lot of peer pressure when you're a teenager. And I learned this scripture in high school. It is the goodness of God that is intended to lead me to repentance, to keep me saved, to keep me from sin. I would literally think to myself, if I was tempted to do what my friends were doing, I would literally say to myself, God is too good to me. I cannot sin. God is too good to me. I do not want to hurt the Lord. God is so good to me. God has blessed me all my life. All my life I've been blessed. 
That's why I love uh, CeCe's song about, the, she says, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. <laughs> With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. As a teenager, I will say, Lord, I don't want to hurt you, Jesus, because God is good. And that's what that scripture is for, my dear sisters. The goodness of God is to lead you to say, Lord, I don't want to hurt you. When God keeps blessing you, you should say, Father, I want to spend more time with you. When you get more favor and more blessing and more raises and more promotions, that should allow you to say, Lord, I want to, I don't want to do anything to offend you, Lord. I don't want to do anything to hurt you because you have been so good to me. Woo! I know I'm talking to some women. God has been so good to you. And the goodness of God should lead you to have a repentant heart. The goodness of God should lead you to say, Lord, I don't want to sin against you. The goodness of God will lead you there. The goodness of God will lead you there. So should we sin because grace abounds? Absolutely not. We should not sin because God is so good. God is so merciful. His grace is upon us. His favor is upon us. It should make us have the posterity that we do not want to sin against him. You know, I wanted to teach this message tonight. I especially wanted to teach, teach this message because I don't do not want any of you wasting time walking away from God when you sin. I didn't say if. I said when. I do not want you to walk away from God when you sin. I am not going to walk away from God when I sin. I'm going to draw closer to God. That's what you should do. I had to restore a Wonder Woman that had some challenges. And it angered me. It literally angered me because she had wasted so much time because she felt like she wasn't worthy because she was dealing with a challenge. And it angered me. I was like, where have you been? She didn't come to the anointing service and I know she would have been there. I said, where have you been? So when we finally connected, she had some challenges. I said, listen to me. When you have challenges, run to prayer. When you have challenges, run to me. Don't avoid me because I'm going to restore you. When you have challenges, run to the church. When you run to the church, don't wallow in that. I told her, I said, repent and let's go. God help me today. Repent and let's go. Let's keep moving, my dear sisters. Listen to me. When you sin, do not walk away from God. Please don't. Run to God. Go, go in prayer. Study your word. Please. God is not leaving you. God is not mad at you. We, we, as long as we walk in this earth, there will be challenges in the earth, but that's what the blood of Jesus is for. So I, it angered me. I said, I got to preach, teach, pray this on pop-up because I don't want another one of you. I do not want another one of you to walk away from God because you made a mistake. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Stay here with us. I don't want to lose one. Stay with us. Draw nigh to God. Take a page out of Peter's book. After he cursed that girl out, he repented. God, help me today. He repented immediately. And he brought 3,000 people to God on the day of Pentecost. Take a page out of Peter's book. Repent right away. The last verse tonight is James chapter 4. Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. We're going to close with this confession in the comments. Come on, put this in the comments, my dear sisters. When I sin, I will draw closer to God. Come on, put that in there. Not if, because we all fall short. Remember, that's not a past tense. That fall there in the amplified version means continually. 
We will fall short of the glory of God. When you do, go back to God. Don't leave him. Don't leave the Lord. Stay with the Lord. Go back to church. We're all flawed individuals, everybody. You belong here. You belong in this family. Not because of anything that you've done. It is because of the grace of God and because of the blood of Jesus. Jesus loves you. So I just pray tonight for every woman that is watching me, Father. If there is somebody that's watching me that feels like they are too far away from you, that they have disappointed you too much, I speak, I pray, I declare, I prophesy that they will feel the spirit of restoration tonight, that they will know that you love them, that they will know that you are not mad at them, that they will know that you have not condemned them. Father, I pray that this message tonight has made it clear to every woman watching me that you deserve to be a part of this family, not because of anything that you've done, but because of the blood of Jesus and because of the grace of God. And you will not be excommunicated from this family because of anything that you've done, but you will keep your connection because of the blood of Jesus and because of the grace of God. So I restore you tonight. If you feel like you are far away, away from God, I restore you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I say to you, my dear sister, come on, let's keep going. Repent, let's keep moving. We have a cross to carry. We all have things we need to do for Christ. We all have things we need to do for the kingdom. Come on, pick up your cross. Let's keep going. I don't care if you sin the, an hour before we started this. Repent and let's keep going. You are still my sister. You are still a part of this family. Nothing will separate us. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Let's keep going. Let's keep moving. You got a business to establish. You got a brand to build for the kingdom of God. You have, you have places to go. You got people to meet. You got a light to shine in darkness. You have it. You have joy to spread to the world. You have it. You have a political platform. You have, you, you, you have, you have people in court that need to see you. If you're an attorney, you have it. You have a mission to accomplish. You have a destiny to fulfill. You have it. Repent and let's keep going, my dear sister. Let's keep moving. Let's keep going. Nothing will separate you from the love of God. I love you all so much. I hope this message takes you through until you meet Jesus. To let you know that the grace of God and the blood of Jesus is what connects you to him. Remember what I said about grace. Be careful with grace. Paul said, should we sin because grace abounds? Then he said, God forbid that you sin because you know you have grace. But it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It is the goodness of God that tell, that should be in our hearts to say, Lord, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to disappoint you, Jesus. I, I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to ignore you, God. I got to spend time with you. I got to pray with you. I got to read your word, Father, because you have been so good to me. I love y'all so much. If you are not saved and you just happen to, to come across this prayer meeting, today is your day to be saved. Jesus loves you. I don't care what you've done. You can accept the grace of God just like all of us have. It is a gift. And that gift is extended to you. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Come on, confess to say, Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the grave and that his blood is the atonement for my sins. I believe that Jesus redeemed me. And I believe that I am accepted because of the blood of Jesus. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. 
You have been so good to me and your goodness has led me to this moment of repentance. I'm sorry. I turn away from my sins. I want to live for you. Come into my heart. I want to live for you from this moment forward. If you have left God, my dear sisters, today is your day of restoration. If you already say, get back in your place, go back to church. Get back in your place. Go back to church with all of the rest of us flawed, imperfect people. Come on in and sit by us because you deserve to be there just like we do. Just like we do. If you need help with prayer and with your with your walk with God, go to my website, AngelaMartinMinistries.com. AngelaMartinMinistries.com. I have a book. Let me teach you how to pray every day. I can show you. I can train you how to do it. I have coaching sessions. Oh my God, I love my coaching sessions. I'm telling you, sisters, I love pop-up. I love wonderful prayer. But them coaching sessions, it's nothing like taking a person singly and transforming them into a woman of prayer. If you want a coaching session, go to my website, AngelaMartinMinistries.com. You can get on that calendar and I will coach you in prayer. Download those seven sacred starters. That is the way that you are, are added to my e-blast. If I ever have another meeting, if I have an anointing service, if we ever do anything different from this online experience, the only way you're going to know about it is through the e-blast. Because I want it to be for women that are really connected to me. I'll never put it on social media. I won't advertise like that. I won't. I want the women who pray with me who are serious about what we do. I want my family there. So make sure that you're added to that e-list, that e-blast list. So you'll know. I don't know when there will be again. I don't know. We had one in February. I don't know when God will tell me to do that again. But if he does, you're going to know about it because it's going to be in the e-blast. So download the seven sacred starters and that's how you'll be added to that. If you ever want to sow into the ministry, just go to AngelaMartinMinistries.com. Click donate. All the ways for you to sow are right there. I love y'all so much tonight. I pray that this word blesses you. I pray that God gave me the anointing and the power to teach this lesson to you because I'm telling you that message of grace can be tricky. I don't want you to ever think because there is grace I can sin. God, Peter said, God forbid that you do that. But I pray that the goodness of God will, will lead you to repentance. I pray that the goodness of God will lead you to the feet of, of the cross. I pray that the goodness of God will lead you to prayer, that it will lead you to, it, to, uh, to your word in, in Bible study, that it will lead you to spend time with God, that it will help you not to offend him and not to hurt him because God has been so good to you. I love y'all. I'll see y'all next week, okay, for pop-up. I love you so much. God bless you. Share, 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 tag, tag, tag. Kisses. Love you. Love you so much. I'm not going to lose one. If you sin, don't you go don't you go away from us. Stay with us. Let's keep moving. Let's keep going. I love you. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.